One of the things that affects us all is the weather, of course. I believe we have a live look outside right now. Yeah, you can see folks there at the bean kind of soaking up some of this sunshine that we have out there after a few cloudy days. Uh, we often look at the 24 hour and even the seven day forecast and yes, it's finally starting to feel like real and not faux fall. Um, so just imagine our pause when we got an email from one of our meteorologists that even remotely mentions lake effect snow. Say it ain't so, but we need some details, please. And so we have Mike Kaplan joining me right now. Mike, thank you so much for taking time yeah. out of your afternoon. I know this might be your sleepy time. <laughs> I'm wide awake right now, I needed it. Did I just see you a couple of hours I ago? I think I just saw you, yeah. But I, I'm telling you, we really did have a moment of pause reading over your email. It, it starts with the unusually warm waters on all yeah. five Great Lakes. Explain this to us. Okay, first of all, uh, you're absolutely right about the unusually warm waters of all five Great Lakes, and that includes our favorite Lake Michigan. Uh, some data just came out a few days ago that showed that Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and Lake Michigan were all extraordinarily warmer than normal. Now, I just checked our local water temperatures uh, along Chicago's lakefront. The water temperature is about 63 at the mid, uh, the south buoy in the uh, middle of the lake. It is still 65 degrees. That is really very warm for this time of year. And we can chalk that up to the fact that we have had an extremely warm meteorological fall. Meteorological fall started in September, and here we are about halfway through October. And temperatures, other than a couple of days, have been, for the most part, much warmer than normal. So that has kept the water temperatures higher. Now, why do we care about that now? I mean, the beaches are all closed. Obviously, there's some people that are still, you know, going into the water, uh, you know, probably putting on a wetsuit or something or dabbing their toes in there. The reason why unusually warm lake water can have an impact on our weather is because it could contribute to early and heavy lake effect snow. Now, let's not say that this is a guarantee just yet. Lake effect snow takes place when you have cold air passing over warm lake waters. And one of the key components in creating that lake effect is what is the temperature difference between the air above and the air close to that water. Obviously, if the water is much warmer than normal and you still get a cold polar air mass blowing over that lake, that temperature difference, what we call in Weatherland the Delta T, the change in temperature, is going to be greater because we still have cold air and now that water temperature is warmer. So the temperature difference being greater can make the lake effect snow guns a little bit more intense. So uh, typically we're looking for, in order to get lake effect snow going, at least a 13 degree Celsius difference between whatever the water temperature is and the air you know a few hundred feet above it and that is not the only thing that contributes to lake effect snow uh, among the other features that one has to consider besides just that delta t which we now know is going to be greater than normal assuming we get some cold air uh, we want to look at what's the wind direction if the wind is blowing in our area from due west to due east, it's very difficult to pick up enough moisture off of the lake. That, that mechanism, that temperature difference, what it does is it creates condensation. It picks up some of the moisture from the lake and it makes clouds. The longer that fetch, we call a fetch, of cold air is over the lake, the more opportunity there is to pick up more moisture and create lake effects. Now, if the wind is blowing across the narrow part of the lake, you typically do not get a tremendous amount of lake effect snow. Conversely, if you can get kind of that north-northwest wind that's pointing straight into northwest Indiana, that's going all the way down the lake, that coupled with that big temperature difference can lead to some gargantuan snowfall totals. Mm. Uh, there are other features that we you know, consider. How much moisture is actually in the atmosphere? Uh, are the winds too strong? Sometimes that can be disruptive. 
but uh, you're, you're going to be see a, lot, see a lot of stuff on social media that's going to be predicting, oh, it's going to be horrible, the lake effects, no, or but some people love all the lake effects, no. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. We'll have tons of snow. <laughs> what I want to say here, Anita, is with some caution, is that, yes, it is true that lake effect snow typically is going to be heavier or more abundant when you have warmer lake water. But that is not the only factor that will determine whether Berrien County gets buried in 40 inches of snow over a weekend or whether they don't. Um, but it, it, it just all kind of, you know, it, it's one of these things that we're going to be monitoring very closely mm -hmm. to see, hey, when, when is that first shot of really cold air coming in here? Um, because that might lead to some lake effect snow if the wind direction is right. The other thing that I'll add here to Anita is the fact that the water temperatures are exceptionally warm right mm -hmm. now. That might lead to the lakes staying unfrozen for a longer mm. period of time. If and when the lakes freeze over, and we haven't really you know, had that happen in a few years since the old Siberia days, um, when the lakes freeze over, then it's, you can't pick up any moisture off the lake because it's ice. It's all ice. So you don't get really any lake effect snow. Your heaviest lake effect snows tend to happen in late autumn into early winter. But if these water temperatures and if the lakes stay unfrozen longer, that means the lake effect snow season could also be a little bit longer than what we typically have. My stomach kind of shifted when you said gargantuan. <laughs> and, and then I was thinking to myself when you said uh, fetch, I'm like, well, that gives a whole new meaning to if you remember the movie Clueless and they were like, that's so fetch. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, right. they, there's more meaning to it now. <laughs> well, Anita, what if I said it was a gargantuan slice of key lime pie? Oh, well, you know, then I'd be all about it then. Uh, let right. me ask you this, and maybe it's a bit of a controversial question, but you know, how much dog do you put in the farmer's almanac? Because this is day two when we're starting to hear any rumblings of snow and they did mention the possibility of snow before Thanksgiving. I'm sorry I lost your audio there Anita. Were you saying something? <laughs> okay that's you, how much you stock you put in it. Okay. I, I, all there right. must be a bad connection here. <laughs> okay all right all right. Look, all kidding aside <laughs> um, the Farmer's Almanac is an interesting read uh, there are some interesting notes in there that are, you know, if you want to know when to plant your rutabaga, uh, that's fine. They have some, you know, uh, when is the eclipse going to happen? When is the equinox going to happen? But from a weather forecasting standpoint, no, please, people stop. <laughs> all, all you got to do is take a look at the, all, look at last year's almanac, see what did it predict for last winter? What does it predict for this week? Mm -hmm. And and if you pay attention, you go, oh, that, that's really off. So uh, none. I put no weight in the <laughs> almanac. I don't mean to besmirch the people who publish these things, whether it's the Farmer's Almanac or the Old Farmer's Almanac. They are two different publishing bodies. Um, from a uh, meteorological validity standpoint, no. You sound like uh, Aretha Franklin when she said, uh, beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns, uh, speaking about <laughs> some singers. So, so let me ask you this then. Um, because summer held on so tight for us this year, it's not feeling like fall is even going to hang around for long. I is that well, really look, a, a thing? There is, um, and I always look for this. There are people who specialize in long range forecasting. Uh, there is a certain degree of mysticism involved in that versus actual science. Um, but there are occasions uh, where some conclusions can be drawn about, hey, what was the summer like compared with the ensuing winter? What was the meteorological autumn like compared with the ensuing winter? A few years ago, we had one of the warmest falls on record. September through November were exceptionally warm. I think it was like a top five warmest fall. And I did some research and looked at what, what were, when we had an exceptionally warm fall, what type of snowfall did we get in the December, January, February timeframe, which is meteorological winter, what were the temperatures like? And the prevailing wisdom that year was that we were going to get clobbered with cold and a boatload of snow. My research showed statistically significant correlations between those really warm falls and having very little snow 
in that Ooh. ensuing winter and temperatures being warmer than normal. And that, you know, knock on wood, is exactly what happened. Um, but there are, you know, lots of other factors that mm -hmm. come into play with making that long range forecast for winter. I don't want to say that simply because we've had this, you know, very warm stretch of weather here mm -hmm. since September, although the, like the first week of September was cool, mm -hmm. but then we ran off four weeks in a row of above average temperatures. We had two days in a row with cooler than normal temperatures, and right now, including today, this is the start of a seventh day in a row of above average temperatures. Say, Mike, it was cool yesterday. But actually it wasn't. If you factor in the high and low for the day, it ended up being four degrees warmer than normal because of how warm the low was. Uh, long answer to your question, Nita. I'm not ready at this point to be able to say with any kind of certitude that uh, we're gonna have a warmer or less snowy winter than normal, but there's a certain degree of what we in the business call persistence forecasting. We are in a drought, which tends to beget more drought. So I am leaning strongly towards not having a snowy winter around mm. here. And the fact that the past couple of winters we haven't had a snowy winter right. uh, also gives me some, emboldens me somewhat to say that. And I would also think that temperatures are likely to be a little bit warmer than normal as well. Um, so, I'm, and, and that suits me fine. I know there are a lot of people that want the big snows. Mm -hmm. They got, you know, business, our snowmobile business is There's dying. There's a business for everything. But I'm, I'm fine with less snow and less cold. Well, what are some things? You, you were at the Morton Arboretum uh, just a few days ago, and, and we were Yesterday. talking about the, the leaves out there. What are some of the things that are affected by the warmth hanging around for so long? Oh, well, definitely uh, the plants uh, has a direct impact on them. I think that we are seeing in many areas, uh, and it's not just the warmth, it is also the fact that it's been desperately dry around mm -hmm. here. I think that we're seeing while you know, some trees are beginning to come into color now, depending on whether you're in the northern suburbs, city, or point south, uh, I think that we're seeing maybe a little bit of a delayed onset of the trees saying, time to shut down the mm -hmm. chlorophyll production, let's let these other colors shine through. And I also think that the drought has sent many trees into a state of kind of shock where not only are they shutting down chlorophyll production because of how dry it's been, they're also dropping a lot of their leaves before they've had a chance to change. I can just tell you in my own neighborhood in Gurney that a lot of maple trees just said, you know, forget about it. They've, they've dropped a lot of leaves prematurely, which then you don't get the full flush of color uh, that you might otherwise get. Uh, you know, you look there by the bean and yeah. you see some of the trees are beginning to change mm -hmm. now uh, in the city. And hopefully uh, this weekend we can get some rain and that will, uh, you know, maybe uh, make some of these colors a little bit more vibrant. Uh, other impacts, you know, I'm sure that uh, some animal life might be hanging around longer. Um, I, I'm a birder. I love following bird migrations. And one of the, the my favorite birds that is usually headed south this time of year ruby-throated hummingbirds. I think they hung around just a little bit longer than normal because of how much warmer it has been. A lot of times they are gone by late September. Sometimes they hang around longer, but I think that uh, some bird migrations have been delayed because of the uh, prolonged warmth. Yeah, and, and from a gardening perspective, uh, what do you think will be suggested now Now that we're seeing kind of these trends here or, or things that people should do or consider given the information we have? Um, you know, uh, there's going to be some plants that are going to keep blooming for several more weeks, I think. That, you know, we're, we're waiting. Here's another thing, that the lack of a frost, that means the bugs are going to mm. still be out there. Uh, the yellow jackets, which this time of year are particularly annoying because they're looking for places to uh, overwinter if they're going to, you know, to hang around here and stay alive. They're they're out in big numbers. The mosquitoes, they're still. If, if we get some rain, uh, typically about a week to ten days after that, you get uh, an increase in the number of Aedes vexans mosquitoes, which are the floodwater mosquitoes. Uh, so those can hang around longer. The stink bugs, those Asian lady beetles, they will be hanging around longer if we don't get uh, the hard freeze. But botanical interest, a lot of flowers are going to keep blooming. I showed some pictures today from uh, one of our frequent photo contributors on the Fox 32 weather app, Kathy, who lives in Porter County, Indiana. 
She has fantastic zinnias, look like midsummer. They're wow. still going strong. I have a friend who's in Volo, uh, and Brian, I'll give you a shout out, Mr. Uh, Kucharski. Uh, the his rose bushes are in midsummer form, and he's always sending me pictures. Look at how, look at how many roses I have here. So maybe a prolonged growing season here, mm-hmm. with the fact that we have not had. Any kind of a frost or freeze. Okay, there were a couple patches of frost last week. I think it was early in the week. Uh, some people reported seeing some frost on a you know neighbor's roof or something. But I'm talking about hard frost on the ground that's going to you know kill your plants. Uh, this is you know it's, it hasn't happened, and there is certainly no sign. I mean, I've been looking way down the road here, at least a couple weeks, and I'm not seeing anything that looks bona fide cold here for that period of time, right on through the end of the month. I mean, we've had snows on Halloween in recent yes. years. You, you remember uh-huh. that. Um, you know, poor kids out there in their costumes getting snow Bundled out. up. Boy, yeah, I, I see nothing like that for at least two weeks. And that's, you know, kind of how far out with mm-hmm. some sense of reliability mm-hmm. I can go with a forecast trend. If you ask me, hey, Mike, what's the temperature going to be on the 29th of October at 4 p.m.? I'm not comfortable with that number. If you say, hey, Mike, do you think it's going to be warmer than normal or cooler than normal on that day? I'm pretty comfortable saying it's going to be warmer than normal. Mm, okay, so let me reel you back in from two weeks out. And can you, since I have you here, just tell us what things are going to be like for the rest of the day or into the weekend? I've got a lot of sunshine here, but there's a mixture of clouds and sun that will be with us throughout the afternoon today. There's a teeny tiny chance that somebody, especially well west of the city, might eke out a brief light shower today. That's looking less and less likely. Uh, In general, the farther south and west you are, higher chance you get of uh, hitting maybe 70 or 73 degrees this afternoon. I think uh, 68, 69 is going to do it around uh, O'Hare. Tomorrow's going to be warmer, mid-70s. There'll be a mixture of clouds and sun. And then we get to the weekend when showers and thunderstorms are going to be more likely. I think Saturday is kind of the day when um, showers would be most numerous. But even then, I don't think it's going to be an all-day rain. Uh, If you look at the graphics that we use, and and pretty much I think anybody in in our industry uses, you're going to look at Saturday and you're going to see a big gray cloud, a bunch of rain coming out of it on our seven-day forecast. And it looks maybe a little deceptively rainy yeah it is going to rain Mm -hmm. but i just i am doubtful that you're going to see you know 18 hours in a row of gentle rain coming down of drought easing rainfall it's just not the case and if we have any additional rain on sunday i think it would end in the morning and be out of here in time for the bears game against the saints at soldier field all right we don't want thunderstorms rolling in when the saints do uh thank you so much mike kaplan from studio (laughs) c You got it. (laughs) Nighty night. Get some rest. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning.